for stopping by. The herd lied. Uh, maybe I, I, I'm being an ageist, and I'm against young people, but I don't think I am. Um, all these young coaches getting jobs in the NFL with virtually no NFL experience as even being a coordinator. And with that, uh, via the Coward Global Satellite Network, Nick Wright joins me. All right, Nick, let's start with this. Um, and again, I, I'm rooting for all these guys because the NFL's better with fun offenses and, and progressive offenses. So I'm rooting for all of them. But Cliff Kingsbury was 4-31 and 31 against ranked teams in the Big 12. What do you make of his hire? Man. I understand the argument for it. He was the co a coach at Houston when Case Keenum broke records. He was the coordinator at A&M when Manziel won the Heisman. He he coached Pat Mahomes. He knows Sean McVay. I get all I get all the reasons that you want to hire the guy when Josh Rosen is your future, and maybe it works out. But I have to be honest. What bothers me the most about the Cliff Kingsbury hire is that he was interviewing in the first place. I I have no problem with upward mobility. I have no problem with people leaving jobs early. But I do think if you take a job, you should be there more than, I don't know, 30 days. Give it a year. And, and Colin, you and I have talked about this in my life. There was, there was a moment where I accepted a job. And literally the next morning, less, I hadn't signed anything. I could have easily extricated myself. The next morning, I got a phone call from a different place offering me what I thought was my dream job. And I let them finish their offer. I swallowed hard and I said, I really appreciate it. I wish you'd called me 12 hours ago, but I accepted a job yesterday. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I hung up the phone and I cried because I thought I was walking away from the only job I'd ever wanted. But I had given someone my word. I hadn't gone, interviewed, taken a position, signed, told young people I'm going to come be their coordinator, and two weeks later been like, hey, bruh, I, I, you know, it turns out, crazy thing, there's NFL openings. I didn't know that was on the calendar. Riddle me that. I, I don't like how he went about this. Maybe he'll be good, but this rubs me the wrong way. I know that's kind of like an old man yelling at a cloud take, but that's, you, if you take a job, do the job at least temporarily before you look for the next job. I agree. Baker Mayfield, hottest job. Everybody wants to coach him. Um, Mike McCarthy's got a Super Bowl, resurrected Brett Favre's career, helped create to some degree Aaron Rodgers. Not interested, reportedly not interested. Bruce Arians, I want it. Took Jameis Winston instead. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Nick, and I'm not trying to be anti-Baker here, but if Baker's all that, Freddie Kitchens is it? He'd never been hired by a team as a coordinator. He was an interim coordinator. I, I don't understand why the Browns went with Freddie Kitchens. I do understand why some of the top candidates might not have been interested in the job absent of Baker. Colin, I have learned this from you. What is the number one thing or one of the number one things you look at, you've looked at Management. when deciding if yeah. you want to take, yeah, who do you work for? And Jimmy Haslam is not a guy that I think you can trust whether you're going to one of his gas stations or whether you want to coach his football team. Like Jimmy Haslam, I, I think we're at 10 combined head coaches and general managers. And I know people love John Dorsey, but John Dorsey is not the boss there. Jimmy Haslam is. And so I, I think that might have cooled some, of pe some people who otherwise would be interested in working for Dorsey and working with Baker. To me, I didn't look at this as an indictment on Baker Mayfield. I looked at this as a lot of teams or a lot of coaches saying, man, is this more than a two-year uh, window because of who the owner of the team is. I like your take. That's good. That's fair. That's a very fair take. I, my, my take may have been a little anti-Baker. That's a very fair take. A, a Baker, I apologize. Thank you. Can I tell you a take of can, uh, can I tell you a take of yours I didn't like that I just heard a moment ago? Yeah, please. Are you are you entertaining working until you're 70? Because whole, part of my career path involves at some point taking over for you, and I ain't got 25 years to wait, bro. Like, I'm trying to, I love my gig, but I'm trying to get back to L.A. before I die. You're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll Larry King this thing. That we, you and I ain't talked about that. Okay. You get me in hysterics here. All right, I got to throw this out. Now, you, there, uh -huh. there is a lot of pressure on one team in the NFL this weekend, and it's Kansas City. 
Mm-hmm. But, it, but between oh. Andy, I love Andy Reid, but there's like a number out there, and did he not win in those playoff games? And Patrick Mahomes is the MVP, mm-hmm. and you lived in Kansas City and worked there, and they're not really good at winning playoff games, even at home. Would you acknowledge Indianapolis comes into your former hometown with house money, hottest team in the league, Kansas City is going to be tight. There's all the, more than any of the eight playoff teams. Your Chiefs, there is massive pressure to win this game. Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. I, I, I think the most pressure is on the Rams, only because 11 wins last year, home playoff game, yeah. one and done. If they then go 13 wins, a bye, home playoff game, one and done. I feel like Matt LaFleur and C- Cliff Kingsbury were smart to take these jobs now because if the Rams lose this weekend, knowing Sean McVay, looking like Sean McVay, <laughs> having Sean as your middle name, maybe is not quite the, yeah. the chip it is otherwise. But to your point about the Chiefs, Listen, the Chiefs have lost a home playoff game after a bye where they lose by three points and miss three field goals. They've lost a home playoff game after a bye where they can't make the other team punt a single time. They've lost a game to Andrew Luck where they blow a 28-point lead and Luck fumbles the ball and then scores a touchdown on it. They lost a playoff game to the Steelers where the Chiefs scored two touchdowns. The Steelers scored zero touchdowns and they lost. And they lost last year to Marcus Mariota after leading 18 points at the halftime. And Mariota threw the game-winning touchdown pass to himself. All of that's happened in Kansas City. So yes, the fans will be nervous. And yes, there is a lot of pressure. Thankfully, the Chiefs have the best player in the league. Thankfully, they have the third highest scoring offense, not in the NFL, but in NFL history. And thankfully, your guy, your godson, Andrew Luck, is playing in the playoffs where he's got a career passer rating of 72, where his touchdown intercept ratio is 11 to 13, where in the playoffs outdoors, it's two touchdowns to eight interceptions with a 52 passer rating. So you're right, a lot of pressure on the Chiefs. But it should be noted Andy Reid, before he had Alex Smith as his quarterback, a winning record in the postseason, not a history of going one and done the postseason. A lot of pressure on the Chiefs. Luckily, they've got the best offense, one of the best offenses in NFL history, with a quarterback having one of the best seasons in NFL history. I think they're going to be fine. By the way, how did you do last weekend with your picks? Oh, I mean, against the spread, I did well. I, I as far as getting the winners, I, I, I mean, it was tough. I mean, I feel like this is a bit of a twist of the knife. I think you knew the answer to this question. I got the Colts game right, and then I didn't get anything else right the rest of the weekend. Joy, how did I do? I mean, Joy, I, don't, Joy, I don't know why you got to bring Joy, that up. Joy, uh, Joy, Colin got all of the picks right. Okay, I just read. Okay, I just Colin, you went four and zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Colin. Okay, so you feel very emboldened. You feel uh, you're big, powerful, Colin Coward. <laughs> should we should we make a little friendly gentleman's wager? I know I know you've started to go down the gambling path. We don't have to put money on it. Let's just do Colts Chiefs, Colin. If if the Colts win, I will when I take some time off in February grow an Andrew Luck neck beard and wear it my first day back. Okay. If the Chiefs win. You'll let the wonderful people at FS1's hairstylist department give you the Patty Mahomes hairdo for a show. How about that, Colin Cowherd? I wasn't even going to do this, but you want to bring up 4-0 versus 1-3, and three, put your hair where your mouth is, big man. <laughs> well, actually, I would do this, and there's one problem. Oh. The one problem. Oh, uh-huh. I, I, I like the Chiefs uh-huh. to win. T- I like the Chiefs to win, too. Oh, oh, the one of the ultimate hedge. I love it. So you get to be right either way. I picked the Chiefs, or I told you, Andrew Luck. Oh, look at this guy. Should have been the MVP. What a, what a coward. I, I, I can't believe you, man. Unbelievable. And I will retire before 70, uh, and you can have the job. Nick Wright, ladies okay, yeah. and gentlemen. Great Thanks. seeing you, buddy. See you, bro. Yeah, see Later, ya. man. Yeah, I actually do like Kansas City this